Hello everyone and welcome to another review video. If you like this content and would like to know more about books and movies that are not well known but deserve to be, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will be aware when a video is posted. Today we'll be reviewing a book from 1967 called Galactic Odyssey by Keith Larmer. To lay the groundwork on this story, this story takes place in a galaxy, the Milky Way, where 20,000 years ago, there was a human empire that collapsed. Now, it didn't collapse because of war. It just got too big. And when it collapsed, all the different races of man went their separate ways. And in this galaxy, the Earth is not the birthplace of the human species. That is a another place but they're not sure where in this galaxy also there are different species that are not human and also some of these alien species are more advanced some are not many of the different planets have different levels of technology some are like big cities that trade with each other and have a high level of civilization others are like small towns in the old west where they get an occasional trading ship every so often and still there are others that nobody knows about like earth that are unknown out there by themselves so with that background let's get into it the story begins with billy danger who is down on his luck and away from any town in the middle of a sleet storm is trying to keep from freezing to death he sees a light in the distance and he heads for it when he gets there he noticed that it's a barn with a silo next to it and a house behind he tries the door of the barn but he couldn't get in so he goes to the silo and he gets into the door goes up the stairs finds some place soft and goes to sleep he's awakened later by a loud noise and a pressure on him he tries to get up but the pressure is too much and he blacks out when he comes through he realizes he's on a spaceship a space yacht with lord desroy lady rare and sir ophio it turns out that lord desroy is paying sir ophio to find and hunt big game on different planets and lady rare is along with them sir ophio gave billy a choice he can work for them or he can die. With that, Sir Ophir began teaching Billy how to be a gun boy and a handyman. First, they stopped on one world to do some hunting and then another before finally getting to Gar 28. There, the first hunt went well, but then the second hunt got Lord Desroy and Sir Ophir killed. Before he died, Sir Ophir got Billy to promise he would take care of Lady Rare. They tried to get back onto the ship, but it was keyed for just Desroy and Orphea. So they ended up going into a ravine and staying in a cave. They found some cats in the ravine, like domestic cats, only bigger. Billy befriended one of them, and one day following it, it led him to a crash of a spacecraft. When he and Lady Rare entered the craft, they were able to set up and use the communications array to send out a call for help. Finally, a ship came. When the ship landed, aliens came out and they promptly shoot Billy, leaving him for dead while taking Lady Rare with them. Billy was badly injured, but he survived. And sometime later, another ship came this time with humans and in return for lord dustwar's ship they took billy and eureka with them they took billy to a planet called inshiro and before they let him go they offered him a spot with them but he turned them down he wanted to go and find lady rare so they gave him his share of the profits and set him off on inshiro on inshiro he used some of the profits to have his shoulder replaced because his shoulder was virtually destroyed when they attacked him 
and they replaced it with iron and plastic and synthetic skin. He also had his ribs replaced and repaired. He searched for a Zividaj embassy because that's where Lady Rare was from, but he couldn't find one. So he finally got a berth as an apprentice on a freighter heading towards the center of the galaxy. He traveled as a crew member on freighters, learning how to be a spaceman, learning to fight, and along the way he figured out who the aliens that took Lady Rear is. They were called the Hiak, and nobody had seen them for thousands of years. He specialized in the engines. He got promoted, which meant that he could be a crew member on ships with longer range, always working his way inward toward Lady Rear's home world. He hired on as a power chief on a passenger liner headed for Ahax. On board, he ran into a crew member who once ran into a wreck that sounded just like the ship that the aliens came in that took Lady Rare. He questioned him to get all the information he could. One night, the passenger liner was hit by something that took out its entire front end. Billy managed to get 87 passengers and crew into a lifeboat designed for 50. He headed the lifeboat for the only habitable planet within its range, Sayak. 11 days after the lifeboat left the passenger liner, it crash landed on the ice world of Sayak. There is a manned beacon on Sayak and they crash landed 400 miles from the beacon. He took 10 men with him, some food, and headed for the beacon. He barely survives getting to the beacon. Of the 10 men that set out with him, 5 died, and all of the passengers of the lifeboat survived. They were all that survived of the 5,000 people that were on the passenger liner. They were all taken to Ahax, where a board of inquiry was convened and he was exonerated and given a small bonus. After the inquiry, three men offered him a deal. They wanted him to camp in a ship that they would give him and he was to slowly work his way into Rish territory and till he ended up at the Rish capital world. Now, he wasn't to do any spying. The four crew members that furnish him would be doing the spying but he was to get them there and he accepted that deal the rich was an alien species that ahax thought were trying to take over economically so with a ship he named jungle and a crew of four he heads out hitting over 20 worlds trading with each one until he got to the place he wanted to go the rich home world wish so he got through customs and he and his four crewmen separated they went off to do their thing and he went to a park sat down and when he was heading back to his hotel he was arrested by four rich policemen the rich authorities begin interrogating him but he demanded to see the ahax consul when the consul came to see him, he blackmailed the consul, telling him he will make up things to tell them about him, which they will believe. When he finished speaking to the consul, he was put in a cell with one other creature. And to his surprise, it turns out that that creature was a member of the Hia, which is one of the creatures that took Lady Rare. When he saw the hair, he lost his mind and he began attacking it, beating it up until it begged for mercy. He then began aggressively questioning it. It told him about the Hayak home world, how it went over and a lot of the Hayaks escaped. And it told him how it ended up on a rich world where it committed a crime and was condemned to 40 years of slavery for that crime. It obviously was not one of those that kidnapped Lady Rare. Its name was Swap, and it began telling him how he may be able to deal with the rich. So when the rich came for him again, he was able to use what Swat told him about the rich to bargain and get his freedom. But 
when he found out that his men were still condemned, he was able to bargain with the rich to get their freedom. And that price was his right eye. After they had taken his right eye, they let him go. When he got to his ship, he found that the four crew members and the council were there in handcuffs waiting for him. And just before he took off, they brought him Swat because they said he helped indirectly in the negotiations. So his payment was his freedom. So on the 57 day journey back to Ahax, he questioned Swat some more and got some ideas on where to look for Lady Rare. When he landed on Ahax, his crew disembarked and disappeared as quickly as possible. When he and Swat left the ship and were walking through the terminal, they saw a picture of him on the screen with orders for his arrest. He got in contact with the person who was looking after Eureka and they helped him get away. And on his way back to the ship, he saw that it was cordoned off by police. So he saw a nearby yacht and headed for it. And with Swat's help, he was able to get it and escape off of Ahax. Listening to the radio, he found out that this was an assistant dictator's yacht that he stole. Swat had an idea where his people may have taken Lady Rare. So they headed to one of those planets, a planet called Drope, on the fringe of the galaxy. On the long trip out to Drope, he found some documentary tapes. And when he examined them, he found one that was about the solar system and Earth. And that's when he finally believed that humans did not originate on Earth. It was Earth, but it was an Earth of thousands of years ago. And they had no cities, no sign of man. So they finally got to Drope. They landed and Shrat went out among the natives and questioned them about seeing another ship, another Heak ship. But they say there haven't been a ship there in a hundred years, so they moved on. They landed on many worlds, worlds where the natives tried to kill them, worlds where they were told they haven't seen a Heak in a long time, and worlds that were dead, where the inhabitants were all dead. And before they gave up, they finally went to one last world. They land in Dhraf, and they go into the local town, where they go into the local market, and they meet a merchant who is selling cloth. And one of the cloth he's selling, they notice, came from Zibidash. And so they ask him, where did he get it? And when the rule keeper, which is the equivalent of a policeman, comes over, Billy asks him, where did he get the cloth? He told them that a slave sold it to the merchant and that the slave belonged to someone called the Triac. And they asked him if he could allow them to meet their slave. And for a price, he took them to where the Triac lived with his slaves. When the slave had brought out, it turned out to be a man whose name was Huvail. And the man explained that he had engine trouble and when of course I was captured and been a slave for 10 years and he begs Billy to buy him. He and the Triac came to an agreement and he traded for Huvail. And at that point, the Triac mentions that he has not a human. And would you like to buy him? So after a bit of dickering, they come to an agreement and he bought the second human. When he saw the second slave at a distance, it turned out that it was a female. And that female was Lady Rare. He sends the two humans along with Schwart to the ship. Schwart was to ensure that the Duartians got paid, but the concoction he drank 
at the celebration did not agree with him. And as he got up and stumbled toward his ship, he saw the ship take off without him and he passed out. When he came through, he felt a pain in his side. When he looked down, he saw the scar. That meant that they had implanted a control device in him. That meant because he couldn't pay, they made him a slave. They put him to work in an underground factory as a sorter next to an alien named Fisher Fisher. And Fisher Fisher told him that he became a slave 17 years ago when his money ran out. Fisher Fisher not only taught him how to sort and became his companion and friend, but told him how things worked in the underground factory they were in. After several weeks, he got Fisher Fisher to help him begin planning an escape. Fisher Fisher thought Billy was a strange creature, one who kept running into danger, but they kept planning their escape until Billy made a mistake. One day, a big Duatian slave attacked Billy. Billy grabbed a piece of pipe and hit him across the shoulders. That turned out to kill him. Apparently, Duatians have their brains behind their shoulder blades. They quickly transferred Billy to a harvesting raft out at sea where he would be cleaning sea life. One day after about three months, the boss overseer put him in a little boat and took him out into the ocean where someone came out of the water and pulled him under. When he came through, he was on a boat with Fisher Fisher who had rescued him. Fisher Fisher got them to a waiting Russian starship, but just before they could board, the Duatians attacked and Billy ended up killing two of them. And Shrat ended up helping him to escape, but Shrat died. The Russian ship got away with Fisher Fisher and Billy on board. Once they were underway, Fisher Fisher explained to Billy how he escaped and how Shuat helped them rescue Billy. Billy and Fisher Fisher stayed with the Russian ship for three months until they got to the planet Glory. But there they got off because Billy had his mission and Fisher Fisher was going with him. Billy and Fisher Fisher kept moving inward, taking jobs on any ship that would take them inward. They saw many planets along the route and then one day their luck changed. They were on a small freighter headed to the planet Falintho when they ran across a derelict. They could tell it was very old, at least pre-collapsed. They took the captain into salvaging her. So Fisher Fisher and Billy went on board to get her running. They went on board and got it running. Once they did so, the captain made them go back and put his own people on the ship to bring it in to their home planet of Thalintho. The captain, of course, tried to drug them so he could sell the ship and keep their share of the profit, but they were ready for that. And when they got to Thalintho, they were able to prove that they deserved some of the share. And they got it and quickly left that planet. Billy and Fasha Fasha headed for the world of Hrix. And when they got there, the first thing they tried to do was to buy their own ship. But the problem they ran into was the new ships were too expensive and the older ships weren't any good. The guy who owned the place they were staying at finally recommended that they go to the junkyard owned by his old uncle. When they got there, the old man showed them a ship, a yacht that they could fix up. They made a deal and they began working on it to fix it up. After three months, they had it fixed up and headed out. They headed for Zividat. 2,000 light years away, stopping at many worlds, picking up passengers and freight when their money ran low. Finally, they arrived at Zividaj, putting down at the port of Radaj. 
Once they got into the terminal, they began asking around for the whereabouts of Lady Rare. And it turns out she belonged to a family, a great house called the House of Arsenet Shinari. They went to the estate and saw a Lord Pastain, who is the head of the household. And he promptly told them that she's dead. But as they were leaving, a Sir Tannis pulled them aside and began speaking to them. He explains to them that she's not dead, but that Lord Pastain is upset with her because she has the power to decide who will become the next head of the house. And apparently there are nine votes and she holds five of them because of her lineage. And everyone thinks she's going to choose an outsider to be the head of the house. When they asked to see her, they were told that her husband, Lord Revenant, would not allow it. As they were about to leave the estate, an old lady who was waiting for them stopped them, asked them if they were here to help her. And when they said yes, she said this is how they can meet her. And she gave them some advice. The old lady invited them to a party, but they had to go and get clothes and shoes. So they went and got the clothes and shoes made. And when they were finished and they were heading to the party, someone tried to kill them. The person failed. They continued on to the party. And when Billy saw Lady Rare, he waited until she was alone and went up to her. She recognized him right away. And just before they could begin talking, a man came and interrupted them, and Billy recognized him also. He was the human slave that was on drop. His name was Huvile. Huvile also recognized Billy, and he came up with an excuse as to why he stole Billy's ship and left him there on draft. And Billy quickly went over to speak to her. And as he was speaking to her, he touched her side and he felt the device that the Drathians have put into their slaves to control them. And when Huvile came over, he saw that Huvile was wearing the controller around his neck. Huvile told Billy, that if he tried to expose him, he would kill her because the controller could cause the device in her to burn a hole in her, killing her instantly. And because Billy had touched Lady Rare, Huvile demanded a blood duel. So they fought. And as Billy was about to lose, Lady Rare came over and grabbed Huvile's arm as he was about to strike. Although it caused her great pain, to get anywhere close to the controller and that's when Billy struck. He used the sword to go straight through the controller and through Huvile's body. When Billy came through all of his wounds were healed but they still wouldn't let him see Lady Rare. So that night he snuck back in and Lady Rare, Eureka and him ran out into the estate grounds where Fusha Fusha came by with the space yacht, they hopped on and blasted off that planet. Now that they're on the ship, Django 3 headed outbound. She explained that when Billy first met her, she had been running away and Lord Desroy had caught her. And that's how the book ended with the three of them, four if you count Eureka, headed outbound for new adventures. This is a good book. It doesn't get bound explaining how everything works. It goes right into the story. And the protagonist, Billy Danger, actually leaves a pound of flesh along the way of his adventures. He doesn't go through completely unscathed, you know. And again, you don't see a protagonist like this very often in science fiction. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And I want to thank you for watching and listening.